had a lasting impact and, and even um, when I was being interrogated at the airport, uh, no, interrogated just before my last day, they brought up and said, listen, you know, just tell us now because obviously the, the you know, your foreign section and then Prime Minister reveals what you've been doing. You can tell us what you were really doing. It wasn't just you on holiday. She said, no, I lived with that for, for ages and I know it was a mistake, but it, it just, it, you know, it lingered. Um, Did he apologise? And then, that? and then we talked, um, not, not explicitly, then we talked, um, I mean, really about the risks for others, you know? It's over for us, we're home, and, and you can see I'm, I'm lighter, I'm happier, I'm fatter again, like, life is, is, is picking up, but um, there are others left in harm's way. There's been two new French people picked up uh, this week, there's a Swedish guy, new one, and one on death row. Um, and we talked, you know, about that risk, and specifically, listen, you know, please do what you can. There's a guy, you know, when they're really threatening to execute someone, um, that's a real red line, and that's a warning signal that if, if they're willing to kill one person, they'll be willing, you know, everyone's not safe. So please do what you can for Murad and the other Brits, but also do what you can for all of those being held. And he said, listen, I, I, you know, I wasn't aware of the case, but I will do what I can. And, and you know, of course, he's just come back from Sweden, so, so fresh in his mind. So, um, yeah, you know, warm and, and um, we had, what, the best part of an hour. Um, so uh, one of the things the Nazanin and Richard did ask the Prime Minister is whether he would consider giving evidence to the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, which is doing an inquiry into Nazanin's case and why it took so long and all the steps taking up to having her release. So they've actually asked if the Prime Minister would give evidence because we think that would be quite compelling and powerful, and he said he would look into that. I was really proud of Nazanin. Um, she was sitting next to the Prime Minister and she told him very clearly and categorically that his words had had a big impact on her and that she lived in the shadow of his words for the best part of four and a half years. Um, I have to say the Prime Minister looked quite shocked, I think, when she said that, but I was really proud she did say that because um, she wanted to make it clear to him that she's happy now, she's grateful, she appreciates the fact that he, she is home now, but there was a time when the words had a big impact. Um, the other thing I raised is that Murad Tabaz, who's still in Iran and was meant to come home, he actually lived in Hampstead, um, so he was in my constituency before he went to America and then was detained in Iran, so we've got to make sure he comes back. Richard, you must have felt very angry all these years that the Prime Minister's words had had this huge impact on your wife over in Iran. No, no, I mean, like, and I stand here now, I'm, I'm relieved she's home. Um, I mean, I think, I think there is a process to, to dig through what went wrong, what might have gone better, um, and probably what could be done to protect people better going forwards. Um, I mean, open conversation with the Prime Minister about, listen, it, it's not easy um, how you protect someone with a, with a regime that's willing to do that to, to other citizens. Um, I, it wasn't, I mean, you know, in fairness also, the Prime Minister, you know, he thanked Nazanin for, she'd, she'd made a hat uh, for Wilfred when he was born as his son. So, you know, thanks her for the things that she'd sent and, and you know, we talked about now uh, Wilfred's too and um, new, new daughter and, and so... Kind of, Gabriella was. Yeah, and, and, and it just being, you know, it's it's nice for us to be a family back together. And did you talk a bit about the, how your family is rebuilding? Did Gabriella say anything to the Prime Minister? Uh, so so Gabriella was was given a, a present of a jigsaw um, and, and, you know, took to making that jigsaw quite promptly once she got it. So um, I think she felt enough grown-up chat and, and, and time to focus on a more pressing tasks. Um, no, it was, it was you know, and I mean, it was, what, two years ago I, I stood here having gone in to see the Prime Minister, um, and came out fairly, um, you know, forlorn in the sense that we were having to battle for longer. I stand here now, the battle over for us. Um, I think there's a, there are lessons to learn, there's a wider, um, yeah, there's a wider problem to ask. And we talked about some of that. I mean, there were some mistakes made at the end, that um, it was rough at the end. Um, and I think that does need to be, you know, when Nazi's ready to talk about it, that there's something to, to go through. Um, but, no, I, I think it, it's not like when this is over that you feel angry. I, I, I think relief is honestly what I think. So the Prime Minister didn't explicitly apologise, but do you feel that he accepts that he made a huge mistake and that it had a big impact? I, I think it's undeniable um, that, that, you know, it, it's so public. Um, it, 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 you know, she said it openly. Um, it, it's been said on the telly many, many times, and, and we've all seen it. Um, I, I said to him, I mean, you know, we often said better late than never. Um, six years is a long time. But, you know, late is a lot better than never. It really is. And I'm, I'm glad they settled it. I'm glad she's home. And, and you know, in the end, they, they paid the money. And you hope that he now helps others who are still stranded there? 
So that's right. So we raised uh, Murat Tabas and Nazneen also raised the case of a man who's on death row who's from Sweden because the Prime Minister's just come back from Sweden. And we've just said the pressure has to be kept up. And Nazneen kept making the point that people who went in quite soon around the time she went in, they're not home yet and she's home and she feels very guilty about that. She wants them to be back as well and she can't sit here and enjoy her life knowing there are people going through the same conditions that she went through. And she talked a bit about what she went through when she was actually in jail and it was quite difficult to hear actually, to sit there and listen to it. it was I mean, it's not like I don't know the details, but to hear it again um, quite in the manner that she was laying it out is quite difficult to hear. So it was pretty stark, no, not an easy time for the Prime Minister over the last hour, hearing her testimony and some of the important issues that she raised. I think he found it interesting, actually. I think he enjoyed meeting her. I think he found it interesting. And I think it wasn't anything he hadn't heard before, in a sense. Yeah, I, I don't think it was an abrasive meeting. No. Um, you know, we're here in happier circumstances than, than previous meetings. Um, yeah, I'm glad we are. Feel a sense of closure? Um, I, perhaps not closure. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I did mean it when I asked him, you know, please do try and give evidence. He said he would, he would look at it. I think... You know, he's been a part of our case in different roles. Um, it's important that his perspective is shared honestly with Parliament. It's important that Parliament does that job to dig into the government and, and work out, you know, what were the lessons so that it doesn't happen again. Um, and and let's, let's hope that that goes somewhere. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all.